everyone and welcome back to two guys in a shed where we are continuing the build of this fantastic amazing insane motorized pedal car listen we didn't finish it the last time um what's still to be done on this one well in the last episode we got the engine on we got the axle all fitted up and we got the chain on what we need to do in this episode we need to sort out a petrol tank we need to sort out some brakes and we need to get some cables running to the front so that we can control the go-kart with two pedals just a few bits in other words listen on top of that we're also going to taste some great coffee so guys stick around okay so the first thing we need to do is make some pedals we're going to use this piece of three inch angle iron it's roughly the right shape but we can make it perfect the first thing we need to do is cut off two five inch sections we're going to take the front section out here and then we're going to drill four holes up the side there's going to be one hole to pivot to give us the action of the pedal and there's going to be three more holes so that we can adjust the height of the bolt that's actually going to hold the cable. This allows us to just give ourselves a little bit of adjustment. We're going to round the edges off, make it look a bit professional. Let's get started. Okay, so that is the basic shape of our pedal. Obviously the edges are still very rough, but we've cut out the basic shape of it. What we're gonna do, we're gonna take it to the grinder and the sander, make sure the edges are all lovely, and then we're going to drill our holes in the side here, so we've got space for a pivot and for some adjustment holes. Okay, so we've got our pedals, they are on here and they move like so. They're very simple, they just work on springs and we've got some bolts through the frame. What we need to do is add the bolt, which I can't find, obviously, which I had in my hand two seconds ago. What did I actually do with that? It's in the drill. I knew it was in the drill. I put it in the drill. Of course it's in the drill. Dudley? Very professional. Thank you very much. I like that sort of thing. I like, I like to add a professional touch to my videos, you know? Yeah. So what we're going to do is this bolt is going to go through the top hole because we want the brake lever to have the most effect for the least amount of movement. So this goes through here. It's very, very warm in here, people. I don't know if you can tell by the uh, perspiration. It's very warm today. There is no air conditioning in the shed. It may uh, surprise you to hear. Are you trying to imply that we would need to drink something? Perhaps we should have a drink. Perhaps. Would you like a coffee? Mm. Bad iced coffee. Oh, an iced coffee sounds good. Yeah, let's do that.
Right, so this was by far the toughest, roughest, meanest looking coffee pouring I've ever seen in my lifetime. Does that mean that coffee tastes good? I don't know, let's check it out. Let's find out. Cheers. Do you know what, it's actually not that bad. Yeah, it's quite nice, I quite like it. I like cold coffee and it's, well it's definitely cold. Mm. This is a Nescafe Azera Intenso. The thing with this one is, it, it is of course instant coffee. It's dark, it is also, uh, it contains 5% real ground coffee which i like you get a texture of it um i would give this a strong recommendation to be honest you can taste the coffee it's cold which i don't mind because it's really warm in here um now here's the big question where on the chart will this fit let's, let's, let's go to the chart right folks we have here the chart i'm measuring two things here the punch and the flavor and here on the chart you'll see episode one and uh littles Fresh vanilla and little rich hazelnut coffee. Do you know what? Back then I wasn't too impressed. Now the big question is where will this coffee end up being? Punch, hard to tell yet, uh, but definitely the way we made it makes it feel just so much better. And there's, surprisingly enough, really a rich flavor. Nothing artificial. This is pure coffee at its best, I think. So I would place this coffee somewhere over here. Mm. No, I would place it somewhere over here there we go okay the next thing we need to do is put the brakes on this is the brake caliper we stole this off the bicycle where we got the brake disc from what we're going to do is put it something like down here out of the way so we need a bracket to come up the top of the brake caliper and then disappear underneath here and bolt onto the frame right let's get the grinder out Okay, so this is our very, very, very hot bracket. We've uh, All we've done really is put an angle in it, put some holes in it, and cleaned up the edges. The idea is the caliper will bolt on here, and these holes are to attach it onto the chassis. So the next thing to do is put the caliper on. And there we have it. It's almost as if we've got a rough idea of what we're doing. Come on. Okay, there we go, brakes. So, now we've got the brakes on, we can start worrying about putting a petrol tank on. But don't worry, we have a plan. So, here we have a petrol tank. It's a leaf blower, but we should be stealing the petrol tank. And there it is. All we need now is some threads to come through here, a bracket to hold them, and to send some more threads down into the chassis to hold it where we need it. Simple. Okay. Cheers. The next thing we need to do is attach this to the petrol tank. To do that, we're going to use a couple of 50mm bolts, which are right here. And this is basically the same process as how we did the caliper. We're going to simply use the bolts as a spacer. So, washer on first, through the original fixing holes. It's never a good idea to start making your own holes in things like this, because you never know when you might want your leaf blower, when you might need a petrol tank. Wow. Clever. There's one. Another pair of washers and another pair of nuts. There's one. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is put the cables in. These are the cables from the bicycle from which we stole the brakes and conveniently they're red. We didn't plan that. Sometimes things just fall into place. Now we've made these two brackets. Now the idea with these is that they hold the engine kill switch, which I think looks pretty cool. And they will go roughly like this and like that to hold the cables. So, we need to get them bolted in and start running some cables in. Washer, locking nut. Ooh, we need to cut that frayed end off. Like that, that's how Dudley, that's how, okay. That's going to go through there, 
and link on to the pedal. Nice and simple. There it is. Oh, it's heavy. Okay, something went wrong there. I got all the sparks through my uh, body. Dudley, that looked pretty darn painful. <laughs> what happened? It was rather. Okay, so some improvements already are necessary. Uh, what happened there was I started it, it ran, but as you probably saw in the video, I touched the top of the HT lead with my thumb and electrocuted myself with quite a few amps. So uh, clearly, before we let any children near this, we need a little uh, protective shroud or something on that stop them getting their little fingers electrocuted. But never mind, that doesn't stop us testing it today. Exactly, so we know what we're doing. Exactly. We're professionals. That's right. Right? That's right, right? Right. Yeah, that's right.